Alan Payon nearly died. The bullet hit him squarely in the chest. It missed his aorta by millimeters. He lost a third of the blood in his body. I can't believe that I'm even here walking around standing and I don't know why he would shoot me in the chest unless he was trying to kill me. That's a kill shot, so. Welcome to our channel where we bring you the most jaw-dropping and outrageous police stories that will make you question policing practices. Today's story is one that will leave you shocked and appalled. So sit tight and prepare to have your mind blown. Our story takes place in Houston where a young man named Alan Peen was seeking medical help at a local hospital, but little did he know his visit would turn into a nightmare. As he lay in his hospital bed struggling with a mental health crisis, he was met with a swarm of police officers who barged into his room, guns drawn, demanding that he show his hands. But here's the kicker. Alan was completely naked and unarmed. Alan Peen was seeking treatment for a mental health crisis, which is a vulnerable and delicate situation that requires compassion and understanding. Instead, he was met with hostility and violence from the very people who were supposed to protect him. It's a tragedy that someone who was seeking help and trying to take care of their mental health was subjected to such brutality and trauma. And it's not just Alan Peen. Many other people in our society who are struggling with mental health issues are met with stigma, discrimination, and violence. This needs to stop. We need to start treating mental health with the same importance and urgency as physical health. And we need to demand that our law enforcement officers receive proper training to deal with mental health crises in a compassionate and effective way. St. Joseph Medical Center heard a code green on the intercom, ran over to the room. Then it was a code blue. Code blue means somebody needs immediate medical attention. And I just see blood everywhere, all over the floor. It was just kind of like smeared here. There was some there, but it was all over the floor. They walked in and saw a 26-year-old college student on the floor, handcuffed, with a bullet wound in his chest. He'd been tasered by police before he was shot. And he still had the, like, taser things attached to his chest. And I, I mean, that was the first time I'd ever seen what taser lines look like. Just a bunch of wires coming from him. And I remember the surgeon screaming at the cop to take his handcuffs off. He was like, take the cuffs off now. We have no time to waste. And he said it multiple times. Really? He's cuffed on the floor? How, we can't do anything with him cuffed. Just take the damn cuffs off him. We can't let more innocent people like Alan Peen fall victim to a broken system. It's time for change, and it starts with holding those in power accountable for their actions. Police brutality in Houston is a rampant problem, with officers getting away with egregious acts of violence against innocent people. In one instance, a group of off-duty police officers beat a man to the point of unconsciousness, and yet they faced no consequences for their actions. Yes, you heard that right. The police officers thought it was appropriate to storm into a hospital room, where a patient was in a vulnerable state, and point their guns at him. And to make matters worse, they used excessive force, tasing him multiple times and then proceeding to arrest him. But wait, it gets even crazier. The hospital staff had informed the officers that Alan was a patient seeking medical attention, but they chose to ignore that and treat him like a criminal. And even after all of this, the charges against Alan were dropped. But the cherry on top of this insane story is that the city of Houston settled with Alan Peen for a whopping $5 million. That's right, $5 million for the trauma and injustice that he endured at the hands of those police officers. To explain what happened in that hospital room, I want to back up to the day before and tell you about the patient. The doctor saved his life. His name is Alan Payon. He's alive and talking about what happened. And when he does, before you get to the very interesting story about how he ended up with a bullet in his chest, it's also incredibly interesting to hear him describe the day that led up to the shooting. Over the course of just a few hours, Basically, his mind slipped away from him. Bit by bit, he stopped understanding what was real and what wasn't real. And he describes what that feels like in this way I have never heard anybody describe before. The week before this happened, Alan Payon was starting his last semester at college in a new school in a new city. He just moved to Houston two weeks before, anxious to do well. Alan comes from a family with a lot of doctors. His dad, his uncle, both his brothers are on their way to becoming doctors. In this family of overachievers, Alan's the one who's still figuring out what he wants to do. Plays video games with a group of friends from high school, smokes weed, soft-spoken, thoughtful, considerate. And he moved to Houston with a plan to get things done. Finished car. Oh, I feel great. You know, like, this is good. I finally have my group ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and get home and continue being productive. I have a book that I really like to read. I'm going to go finish that. And then 
Now, I guess in the car, he starts thinking about all the things that he needs to read and do and study, and something in him just kind of tips, he says. He starts to panic. But, you know, he gets home, he starts to cook some food, he tries to calm down. He's got a plan to play a video game online with his buddies, hooks up the PS4, gets on FaceTime with his friends. So I'm trying to play on the video, on the game, but it's like my wires start getting crossed. Like, well, like you know, things start getting confusing, like confusing. Like I have this controller, um, but then like a, a thought would interject. He thought this controller somehow switches on a processor inside of him. You know, like you're, I, like I'm this bionic being who had been reprogrammed by the enemy. It's like where you have the delusional thoughts competing with your rational thoughts and then you disproving your, your delusional thoughts, but then another one comes up and it, th- it seems more likely. His computer, he thought, was not his computer. It was a state-of-the-art device that could summon drones to destroy his apartment complex. Meaningless coincidences seemed like signals that he was on a secret mission. Now, Alan had had delusional episodes before, two times. The first was in 2008. But this isn't an isolated incident. So what does this say about our system? How many more innocent people have to suffer before we make a change? Police unions, qualified immunity, internal investigations are just a few policies that should be changed to make sure police think twice about abusing authority. Let's not forget making them pay for their own insurance so their screw-ups come from their pockets. Stay tuned for more stories that will leave you questioning everything you thought you knew. And if you want to learn more about this case, be sure to check out the articles in the description below. Subscribe to the channel if you would be so kind. It really does help. Lots of hospitals now have police and ex-military doing security with guns. Hospitals aren't required to keep records on how many of their patients are injured or killed by those guns. 